Okay, hi there, and welcome to the third video in our series of six on key micro diagrams for economics in 2019. This is the third one on markets, market failure, and government intervention. In the next three, we will switch our attention to theory of the firm, costs and revenues, market structures, and government intervention in markets, including regulation. So this time, we'll take a look at some examples of intervention diagrams. Of course, if there's a market failure, then there is at least a case for some form of intervention in the market. Uh, whether or not it's effective or equitable and efficient, of course, is open to debate. But the analysis comes first in your answer. Let's look at some examples. First, a uh, couple of slides are to do with indirect taxes. Uh, this, of course, is an indirect tax imposed by the government on a supplier. And one of the key aspects here is who pays the tax, the burden of the tax. When demand is fairly price elastic in the left hand side of this diagram, then a, a tax shifts the supply curve. And most of that tax is absorbed by the supply of the orange area. The price goes up from P1 to P2. Most of the tax is absorbed by the supplier. The total tax revenue, of course, is the, is the green plus the orange area. Contrast that on the right hand side with a demand curve which is more price inelastic. And you can see here the burden of the tax shifts mainly to the consumer the producer is able to pass on most of the tax to the consumer. So it's quite important to know the, the relationship between elasticity of demand and the tax burden. Uh, the producer will pass on the whole tax when demand is perfectly inelastic, uh, as in the left-hand diagram here. Consumers are totally insensitive to the price. The producer can pass on the, the whole of the tax straight away. Uh, all of that green area goes to the government in tax. And it's also when supply is perfectly elastic on the right hand side here. It doesn't matter what the elasticity is, uh, if there is a, a tax on the product, a uh, specific tax in this case, the supplier can pass on the um, tax to the consumer because the supply is perfectly elastic. They just raise their price plus the tax. Those examples here, these ones here, are specific taxes. There's a parallel shift in the supply curve. Uh, here's an example, of course, of an ad valorem tax, a percentage tax, VAT, good example, so to insurance premium tax, where the amount of tax goes up, the higher is the supply price. So typically, if you tax luxury items, for example, 25% of £20,000 is a lot of money, 25% of 50p is very little money, so the amount of tax per unit goes up with, uh, with price. And it's important that you get a question on percentage tax in the exams to draw an ad valorem tax to show the examiner you know the difference. Subsidies, of course, lots of subsidy diagrams. I think the crucial point to take away really is that the best answers show the effect on price and quantity. Yes, the price here goes down from P1 to P2 with a subsidy. So the consumer pays P2. The producer gets P2 plus the subsidy. So the producer actually gets price P3, and the green area here shows the total cost of the subsidy to the government. It's always worth mentioning the cost of a subsidy as part of your evaluation. And then you can talk about who pays the subsidy, who benefits from it, and who eventually pays. Uh, again, evaluating the effect of subsidies, if you change the elasticity, in this case of demand, you get a slightly different result. In the left-hand side here, demand's fairly inelastic takes a big subsidy, a big price cut to cause a fairly small change in demand. On the right hand side, however, a similar subsidy with a much more price sensitive, price elastic demand causes a significant increase in quantity consumed. So the impact of a subsidy depends on the elasticity of demand as well as the generosity of the subsidy itself. Lots of questions these days, of course, asking about maximum prices. I mean, here's one example. If you impose a maximum price in the rented market, market for rental um, property. Again, to improve this diagram, you'd probably put quantity of rented housing. Let's just type it in, actually. Quantity of rented housing. Just doing that in an exam contextualizes the market. So in this case, there should be the rent, shouldn't it? OK. So contextualizing the diagram. If you get a question on rent controls, make sure that you don't just put price and quantity. You put rent and quantity of rented housing on the, on the, on the various axes here. Always draw to the axes. A maximum price has to be set below 
the equilibrium to have an effect but of course this then creates a disequilibrium now you face a choice in the exam do you just leave the diagram there or do you draw a separate diagram ideally however you develop the diagram let me just develop this diagram a bit here i've drawn a, a maximum rent in yellow below p1 at quantity q3 there are some people willing to pay rent p2 for their property but of course they're capped at the maximum rent so there's a kind of yellow area here of consumer surplus which in theory maybe the the landlord could extract in some way with maybe an extra charge or some sort of underhand um, transaction that takes place don't be afraid to develop your diagram showing areas and lines there's your basic rent control diagram here's a more developed diagram showing a disequilibrium and a potential for some shadow markets some secondary pricing at a price higher than the maximum rent so the legal rent is here but actually a lot of transactions may take place above that rent unofficially develop diagrams it's always a good idea to get the top marks another example of intervention will be carbon trading um, classic market for carbon permits where the, the supply is essentially fixed allocated out if we shift the supply of permits to the left in other words if we make carbon permits more scarce that causes an increase in price from 10 euros per ton to 20 euros per ton um, for a given level of uh, demand um, again that should in theory increase the incentive to invest in low, low carbon technology but don't be afraid to develop the diagram let's say there's a growth in the economy demand for carbon permits shifts out to d2 now so we have s2 permits but a higher demand for carbon permits again in theory that's going to drive the price of carbon up towards 30 euros per ton and maybe that's the price which really kick starts makes it makes it worthwhile for firms to invest in clean energy investments who knows in other words, what I'm saying here is don't just draw a simple supply and demand diagram with one equilibrium point. Develop a diagram, shift a curve, change a price, tell a story. The narrative really helps the evaluation. Of course, the opposite to a carbon trading is to have a tax. The beauty about carbon tax is that you can bring the externalities diagrams that we talked about in the previous video into play. So here we have some negative externalities from production the marginal social cost lies above the marginal pri private cost there's an externality here um, the private optimum is output q2 but there's a big external cost there equal to bc ideally we'd want to get the output to q1 to take into account the social cost well if we add a carbon tax onto the private cost equal equivalent to the cost of the externality the blue dotted line shifts up and in theory that extra tax causes an internalization of the externality and can help to reduce output help reduce pollution towards the social optimum level carbon taxes of course create revenue the revenue is shown by the yellow area here that's the tax revenue going to the or the, the revenue from the auctioning off of permits uh, sorry the, the, no the revenue from the carbon tax which goes to whoever is levying the tax these kind of diagrams can make such a difference again notice on the x-axis I've contextualized it the quantity of carbon it's not just quantity um, in theory I suppose I should be putting price of carbon on the what on the y-axis there I put benefit and cost and said actually it doesn't matter too much one word about diagrams please I mean I've done it here but please don't wrap loads of text around your diagram keep it nice and clean and clear and precise the text can go into your main answer the reference to the diagram can go on the answer. Arrows, annotations, absolutely fine if it helps explain the point you're trying to get across. Uh, we'll talk about minimum wages when we do a, a, a labour market diagram session, which I think is going to be, um, I think it's going to be video six. This is video three, but just to show a minimum price here in the labour market. On the left hand side of the labour market without a minimum wage. Uh, wage is W1. A minimum wage course has to be set above the going rate for it to have any impact on the market so you could maybe you could put it on the same diagram but here's a diagram on the right hand side showing a minimum wage either way government intervention loads and loads of opportunities for good diagrams which can really help tell a story develop those diagrams 
use it as the concrete base for some terrific analysis and then some even better evaluation.